Welcome to DSEJ Home Classes and attempt to connect learner with the instructor. A digital initiative by Directorate of School Education Jammu. Namaskar my dear students, hope you are all fine. Once again I am here with a new topic and we are going to start today the chapter Morphology of the Flowering Plants. So let us first of all discuss what actually we mean to say by the term morphology. My dear students, <coughs> morphology is the branch of biology which deals with the study of external forms and structure of the living organisms. Morphology is the science wherein we study the external structures like when we are studying the plant, if we talk about the roots, stem, leaves, flowers, fruits, actually we are studying morphology. It is very useful branch because by studying the external feature, we can identify a particular organism. And correlating the external features, we are able to group the similar organisms into groups so it is useful for the purpose of identification for the purpose of classification for example in this figure i have labeled here the various structures of the plant for example this is the root then is the stem leaf flowers fruit etc nodes internodes are shown here when we are studying these external structures we are actually studying morphology now we will start with the root as the first structure for studying the morphology of the plant and in the coming lectures we will be talking about various organs of the plant what is first of all we will talk about root the root is the underground structure of the plant which is meant for the purpose of encourage and the absorption it is non green portion of the plant and it is positively geotropic by the term positively geotropic i mean to say this grows towards the gravity that is like this it grows towards the gravity and it is negatively photographic uh, phototropic it means it grows away from the light it grows towards the soil and it provides nourishment to the plant now root because it is a diverse organ and diverse variety of plants are there so there are diverse types of the root systems and accordingly we have classified into two types or the three types sometimes like the tap root system fibrous root system and the adventitious root system first of all the tap root system it is the feature it is uh, the tap root system it is found in case of the dicots where there is one main root like this this is the one main root and then there are the secondary roots and then there may be the tertiary roots but there is one main root which becomes quite strong and stout and supports the rest of the roots but in case of fibrous roots the root develops from the lower nodes and it is not necessarily that it will develop from the radical portion of the embryo whereas the tap root it develops from the radical portion of the embryos root develops from the lower nodes they all are of the same length and there is no primary secondary or tertiary root like that and in case of the adventitious root they develop from the organ of the any organ of the shoot system and we have divided this into two types of the root systems as a result of it first is the tap root system and then is the adventitious root system a tap root system which develops from the radical portion of the embryo looks like this there is one main root then secondary and the tertiary roots and it is typical of the dicots then is the adventitious root system the root develops from any portion of the plant other than the radical and it is known as the adventitious root system 
it may develop from the stem or from any node or internode or even from the branch of the leaf you can see here there is no tap root there is no primary root no secondary all the roots are of the similar length and the shape now my dear students i have to tell you that root shows different regions in terms of its growth and development the three regions that we come across in the root are root of meristematic activity root of uh, uh, sorry region of meristematic activity region of elongation and region of maturation let us talk about these one by one the first is the region of meristematic activity <clears throat> there is the meristematic cell zone at the tip of the root but it is sub apical in position not at the apex a little away from the apex because of presence of the root cap the root cap is the layer of the cell which covers the meristematic zone of the cells and provides support to the growing root because root has to grow inside the soil and it provides it protection to the tender meristematic region this is a meristematic cells divide and increase the number of the cells once the cells have divided they start elongating in this zone this is called as the region of the elongation region of the elongation where the cells they elongate in size once they have attained the full fledged size uh, size they enter into the region of maturation the region of maturation is this one which may be here the root here later on and these three regions the region of meristematic activity region of elongation and third one is the region of maturation so dear students there are different regions of the growth and as i told you the root does the function of encourage and the absorption but sometimes it does some additional function that we will study under the topic root modifications there are several types of the roots which are modified for different purposes and depending upon the type of the root a type of the additional function modification that it is going to perform we have divided the root modifications into four types the tap root modification adventitious root modification then modification for additional support and modification for some vital functions we will talk about these modifications one by one so let's start with the tap root modifications we have here the conical root the fusiform root napiform root and the tuberous root example of the conical root is the carrot which is conical in shape that is triangular in shape you can see here it is triangular in shape and then is the fusiform root example is the radish the radish is a uh, tapering that is narrow at the upper end narrow at the lower end and slightly broader in the middle then is the napi form turnip is the example where it is globular at the upper end and slightly tapers towards the downside this is the napi form root and tuberous root sweet potato where it shows the a uh, tuberous tuber like appearance so these all the modifications the tap root modifications they does the additional function other than the encourage and absorption the function that they perform additionally is the storage of the food next is the modifications for adventitious root modifications this is the adventitious root system and these different modifications are to perform functions such as storage of food mechanical support some special functions or vital functions the adventitious roots gets modified into tuberous root system 
fasciculated root system beaded monily form modulate nodulated and annulated which appear somewhat like this this is the tuberous root system this is the fasciculated root system monily form annulated in annulated you can see is this ring like structures in monily form you can see this beaded appearance and then is the uh, nodulose root uh, system where the nodule like structures are seen on the root so these are the various modifications of the adventitious roots now third one is the root modifications for additional support my dear students sometimes for various causes for various reasons the sole root of the plant cannot support the plant in its position so at that time to give the additional support to the root system the modifications of root are seen for example this is the prop root you can you have seen many old plants where the roots start coming from the branches and ultimately touch the ground and become pillar like to support the old plants and this modification of the root is called as the prop root modification then is the stilt roots that is due to the weaker stems the sole roots are not able to hold the plant in its position then the additional roots arise from the nodal portion and keep the plant straight so this modification is known as the stilt root modification then we have root buttresses in some plant uh, sterculia this uh, these root buttresses that is the downwards the root they broaden and enable the plant to keep itself upright and then there are the climbing roots when the plant by attaching to some neighboring support it gets the upright in position and have an access to the sunlight this is called as the climbing root then there are some certain specific root modifications for various purposes such as hostoria or the sucking root respiratory roots or the breathing roots or the pneumatophores then there are the floating roots and the epiphytic roots let us discuss some of these first is the pneumatophores pneumatophores is the type of root modification which is seen in the mangrove plants which grow in highly saline or the silted conditions where such a silty soil such a high salty condition saline conditions that does not allow oxygen to enter into the soil and therefore the roots are deprived of the oxygen in an adaptation for the survival of the plant the roots they start moving like this you can see that is negatively geotropic they start moving and come out of the ground and look something like this they look something like this these roots they come above the soil they cause the root to have an access to the oxygen and therefore this does the function of breathing and are called as the pneumatophores then there are the climbing roots these are the roots which help the plant to cling on certain support this is commonly found in the epiphytes epiphyte is an association of the plant with another plant which is only for the purpose of the support and no other benefit and there the roots develop on the surface of the root uh, on the surface of the other plant in the air so this is another modification providing some vital functions so that's all for the topic roots thank you stay safe stay healthy till we meet next time thank you dear